This episode of the Potterverse is brought to you by MinuteWithMary.com. If you would like to feel a little extra special, maybe a little um, Wingardium Leviosa on your eyelashes, I have got the very best mascara. It's my 40 Epic Mascara, and I'm offering it at a discount. It is gluten-free. For those of you who do have gluten allergies, I did want to make sure that everyone knew all of my mascaras are gluten-free. It's a very real thing. I didn't know that you, gluten you could be get, a mascara. Yeah, like that you can get like allergic gluten to gluten through your mascara. In, gluten sneaks in everywhere, man. It's crazy. Wow, that's crazy. It's crazy. Crazy talk. So no matter what, if you have a gluten allergy or not, you can try out my very best mascara. It's going to give your lashes a nice thick fullness and length as well. You can get at a discount by going to minutewithmary.com slash discount. <laughs> From Providence, Rhode Island, welcome to the Potterverse. It's a podcast dedicated to the book and film universe of Harry Potter. So grab your favorite wands and time turners, and let's step into the night and pursue that flighty temptress adventure. Everybody and welcome. My name's Mary Larson. My name is Blake, and I love Snape. <laughs> he is the best. He's Blake's best. No, he, no, 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 no. No, he's he, not my no, best. No, he is the best. No, he's not my best. He is by far the best. Mm. I, I, name me one character that's better than Snape. Hagrid. Nope. Not close. Ha- Hagrid's Hagrid. Great. Love Hagrid. Sweet guy. Loves drinking, getting Hagrid wasted. I'm all about it. By the way, get your Hagrid wasted shirts. Or your Hagrid's Marian Bakery Blake. shirt. Oh, yeah. <laughs> at the That's Marion Blake store. Style. Those those are two are, are very popular at the moment. They, I can't, can't even keep them on the shelves, if you will. Snape's better. Sorry. Well, anyway, um, so <laughs> really excited to talk about this chapter. We want to remind all of you... <laughs> To join in the fun live, if you're listening to this via the podcast and you want to make sure that you get a complimentary texting reminder, you can do that by texting the number 81010 and in the message field at Elderwand, I will send you a complimentary text to say, guess what? We're going live. Come check us out on Instagram, YouTube, Twitter, and Facebook. We're going to do a little wave. Hello to our friends who are joining us there now. And as I said earlier, let us know. What class you would be most excited to attend is your first year. Or am I going to answer that now, or should we Give me a wait? moment. Okay. I'm, okay. Fair enough. Yeah. Because, of go course, ahead. this this chapter is titled The Potions Master, mm-hmm. which we spend some time with this Potions Master, but we spend a lot of time with a lot of other people. It should have been called The First Week of School. That's what I think <laughs> it should have been called. Anyway, um, here is my uh, little reading from Chapter 7, The Potions Master. Let's do it. As there is little foolish wand waving here, many of you will hardly believe this is magic. I don't expect you will really understand the beauty of the softly simmering cauldron with its shimmering fumes, the delicate power of liquids that creep through the human veins, bewitching the mind and snaring the senses. I can teach you how to bottle fame, brew glory, even stop our death, if you aren't as big of a bunch of dunderheads as I usually have to teach. <laughs> this is the exact reason why I love Snape. Because you can tell that Snape loves teaching, but he effing hates it, too. He effing hates the kids. Be careful with your language as I we have to... I know, I don't even like that. Okay. He really hates he kids. He fracking hates the kids, and especially Gryffindors, and even more so Harry Potter... And the fact that he has to teach James Potter's son, just it must just go right up his key stuff. I'm happy that Alan Rickman in the movie didn't have to say Dunderheads, but it was really fun to read. Really, really fun to read. Because a sure. lot of this was pulled straight into the movie, but this whole, like, if you aren't as big of a bunch of Dunderheads as I usually have to teach. Mm-hmm. Like, that right there, snaps. Snaps to Snape for giving the sass. <laughs> All right, so, Blake, would you like me to give a very quick breakdown of what happens 
in well, this chapter. we got to get into the show first. Are you ready? Oh, yes, please. Before we do that, though, remember, go to MaryandBlake.com. Check out all the great podcasts and blogs that we have there, uh, including the Hamilton Podcast, mm. Outlander Cast, mm. uh, and many, many more. And uh, check us out, uh, Mary and Blake, on all the social media, whether it's Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, and send us the reviews that you that you really Pretty appreciate. Please. You know, we've been getting a ton of reviews on Apple Podcasts, and that is awesome. Keep sending them. We really appreciate it. It makes my day, to be honest. I love reading them, and it does help people discover the podcast because, as always, the more reviews there are, the more people will take the show seriously. So that gives us the opportunity to go ahead and talk to more people. But for now, Marvin, are you ready to get into this chapter eight, the potions master? Let's do it. I solemnly swear that I'm up to no good. It's a quick synopsis with chapter seven, which might I add, seven being the magical number, is this is named the potions master. It's like the very magical number in general, but especially. Oh shoot! (laughs) Well, there goes that fun thing. I've been saying seven this whole time, and you're like, yes, yes, yes. (laughs) Never mind. Let's move on. Can you replay the intro? Push the button. Which one? I don't know. The like, get into the show music. I will play it again. <laughs> I solemnly swear that I'm up to no There we go. <laughs> Your hands all sweaty. Your hands all sweaty. Oh. So here we are tackling chapter eight, the <laughs> potions master, which I so lovingly like to call the first week of class. Uh, it takes place pretty much like September 2nd through what? September 7th. Hey, you know what's not a magical number? Eight. Eight. <laughs> eight is square square times two. Um, so, of course, Harry gets to go to school. Everyone's super excited that Harry's there because they heard his name uh, at the sorting hat. Everyone's right. pumped to try to find him. He gets to meet his professors like Flitwick and Professor Sprout. And he gets to meet the boring, boring Professor Bins. Um, and he, of course, you know, has gotten to see a little bit more of Professor McGonagall. And then we spend time with Snape. We have an interesting time there that we'll discuss in a little bit, but then we also have a great little field trip to Hagrid's house. Oh, yeah, now you're talking. Yes, and Hagrid and Ron get to meet. some tea. They talk dragons, they try to eat rock cakes, and goodness gracious, why does it smell like garlic? Here we go. Oh, this is the best. But, you know, of course, we have to, as always, start at the beginning. It's a very good place to start. And I need to point this out. Because Hogwarts so far has been a... I mean, it's a, just been one day. Harry literally got there yesterday. Right, right. So, like, so far, <laughs> like, within within the text, Hogwarts has been, like, this kind of mystery place of you don't really know where things are. You don't have a sense of the geography mm-hmm. yet, which is a good and bad thing. But when it comes to this chapter, we finally get some more details. And I, I challenge anybody to find me an accurate map of Hogwarts. I cannot find it. Well, but, it keeps changing. But, and, and that is what I'm about to just get at right now. It keeps changing. And it changes for the better. And, and, and it changes in the best way for the story itself. And let me read this. There were 142... Oh, I'm sorry. Here we go. Whispers followed Harry from the moment he left his dormitory the next day. People queuing outside classrooms stood on tiptoe to get a look at him or doubled back to pass him I wouldn't in the need to stand on corridors or get <laughs> staring. <laughs> <laughs> Harry wished they wouldn't because he was trying to concentrate on finding his way to classes. There were 142 staircases at Hogwarts, wide, sweeping ones, narrow, rickety ones, some that led somewhere different on a Friday, some with a vanishing step halfway up that you had to remember to jump. Then... There were the doors that wouldn't open unless you asked politely or tickled them in exactly the right place. Tickling a door. And and doors that really weren't doors at all, but solid walls just pretending. It was also very hard to remember where anything was because it also happened to move around a lot. The people in the portraits kept going to visit each other, and Harry was sure the coats of armor could walk. I would not be well. Oh, my goodness. I'd have to go outside, see where was north, south, east, west. This, <laughs> you would have so many anxiety attacks. I, you know, 
I would just follow someone. <laughs> Where's the library? <laughs> <laughs> that would be you. Uh, the worst part is the people in the portraits keep leaving. Because at least you could be like, hi, person in the portrait. Can you point me in the right direction? I usually pass you. But this is their first day. First week of school. Right, exactly. And and it, it's actually, already hot enough when you go to a new school. Like, how were you, yeah, on your first, like, day of college? I was miserable. I couldn't remember anything. Didn't know where to go. A person that I knew that was there a year before had to meet me outside of my, out of my dorm, like, the previous night at, like, two in the morning just to show me, okay, this is your class. That's that building. My goodness. This is that class. That's that building. <laughs> Oh, it's a lot, man. It's a lot. I luckily went to school, went to college a week and a half early because of band camp. Yes, it does exist. Don't hate. Don't hate, friends. Nerd! We're part of the nerd clan. <laughs> These are my people. But because this of band, one time camp, at band camp, you got to go to school like two weeks early mm-hmm. and then you had the upperclassmen. So they just kind of showed you everything and you got to know where everything was on campus. And then I showed my friends when they came to the dorms where their classes oh, were. Oh, God. Nerd! Hi, I'm Mary. I live next door. Want me to show you where all your classes are and make you a map? Oh, Will you be my friend? <laughs> No, God, please, no. I lived no. in the honors dorm. They appreciated no. me, Blake. No! <laughs> they appreciated my highlighted maps. Because <laughs> I did that. This is where you kind of go. You needed to be one of those people that works at one of them theme parks. You need to go here, and then you go here. Like, you should work at Disney. Absolutely. I mean, after all the whole COVID thing. I would love that. <laughs> Except it's too hot. Okay, let's continue. So you're talking about all these magical staircases, yeah, and it's so of which is 142. And it's so descriptive uh, of, of what Hogwarts is. You still don't have a real sense of the geography of Hogwarts, but you start to get a How sense. How do you pronounce that? Hogwarts. 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 No. Hogwarts. Not Hogwarts. Hog- Hogwarts. Hog- Hogwarts. <laughs> Hogwarts. 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 Why are you making fun of me? I don't know. You say it in a weird way. No, you, you say it. I can't right now. I'll get back to you on yeah, that. Yeah, nice try. You don't get a sense of the real geography of Hogwarts yet, but you do get a sense of the magicality of it and how special it is as a place, but also what feels like a living character unto itself. And the beauty of what the author does here, it, 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 it spits you right into that, into that sense and that frame of mind of, Oh my god, I'm so nervous. These freaking staircases are moving. You're instantly transported right into Harry's brain. And you can't start that chapter off any better than the way that she did. How do you feel about some of the doors needing to be tickled? Um little it's a it's a little suggestive. I'm not gonna lie. I like it though. Uh <laughs> Imagine, like, I just can't get the stupid door to open. I can't tickle it right today. Hey, it's all good. And then there are, of course, the doors that are pretending to be doors. So that's always fun. Can you believe that? Uh, imagine that, like, trying to walk in. You'd be swishing and flicking everywhere. Oh, <laughs> so much swish and flick. Um, we, of course, learn a bit more about Filch and how he's able to pop in and out of places. He probably knows more of the secret ways throughout the castle than the Weasley, or except for the Weasleys. Mm-hmm. But we also get this little bit where um, Hagrid, later on in the chapter, refers to Filch as like that old git. So yes. you know that Hagrid's on our side, guys. Right. And everybody hates not only uh, Filch, but also Mrs. Norris. Um it says that like students want to give her a good kick, and I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, here we go. Uh, the students all hated him, and it was the dearest ambition of many to give Mrs. Norris a good kick. That is our six year old's favorite line from this book, and he'll just like mumble it. <laughs> give Mrs. Norris a good, a good kick. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you picked up. That's what you picked up from the oh, audiobook. You silly goose. Oh. Um, and we meet all of these different professors. So Professor Flitwick, when he's doing roll call, gets right. so excited that Harry Potter's in his class that he falls off of his books. Um, we get to meet Professor Sprout. I don't get really get to hang out with her that awfully much. We get to also meet um, Professor McGonagall, who continues to be stern. She's obviously not surprised that Harry's in her class. She turns her table into a pig, which is very cool. Totally not what happened in the book. But no. she did the whole cat thing. Pig school would have been hard to do with CGI. <laughs> and we also get to hang out a bit with Professor Oh, yeah. Professor Quirrell, the way that he's introduced is a perfect sleight of hand from the author. I mean, the the great thing about twists and how they operate is you have to see it right in front of you and still not know. Mm -hmm. And you still have to... 
Uh, I, do you remember the movie The Prestige? Of course. So The Prestige, the first frame of the film, the first frame of the film is the hats and all of the multiplied hats. Yes. And it tells you the twist in the first freaking picture and you don't even know it. And essentially, the author is doing the same thing here. And I, I want to read this passage because it's so expertly written. The class everyone had really been looking forward to was Defense Against the Dark Arts. But Quirrell's lessons turned out to be a bit of a joke. His classroom smelled strongly of garlic, which everyone said was to ward off a vampire he'd met in Romania and was afraid he would be coming back to get him one of these days. His turban, he told them, had been given to him by an African prince as a thank you for getting rid of a troublesome zombie, mm. as, you know, zombies go, apparently. But they weren't sure they believed this story. For one thing, when Seamus Finnegan asked eagerly to ha hear how Quirrell had fought off the zombie, Quirrell went pink and started talking about the weather. For another, they had noticed that a funny smell hung around the turban, and the Weasley twins insisted that it was stuffed full of garlic as well, so that Quirrell was protected wherever he went. This is the author telling you right away, don't worry about it. Yeah, he's funny. He's he's yeah, he's got some things going on. Yeah, he smells like garlic, like, but don't worry about him. Don't worry about him. Did you have a stinky teacher? Look over here. Look over on that side. Oh yeah. I oh. have a stinky teacher. Oh yeah. I have Not a only do teacher. we have that with Coral, but earlier on in the chapter, while we're talking about all of these staircases and everything changing, um, Harry and Ron got lost and they actually started to go down the, the third floor corridor that they're not supposed to go down. Mm -hmm. And who saves them but Professor Quirrell? Right, exactly. What is Professor Quirrell doing around the third floor corridor? Looking for an item that may or may not be there? I'll tell you what, he's not looking for more garlic. <laughs> Definitely looking for garlic. Not in the kitchens tickling a door. <laughs> I could tell you that. <laughs> They tickle a door in the kitchen. That's what she said. <laughs> Some goblet of fire. Don't hate. Oh man. <laughs> so yeah, no, it's it's it's. They have a class at midnight. Where the astronomy? Um, oh, watching okay. the different stars and everything. Imagine that. Like you need a day off after Wednesdays because right. on Wednesdays, if you're staying up till midnight charting stars and planets and everything, I hope they have a day off from there. How about how about Hagrid just wanted to hang out with Harry and be just like, hey, you want to come by and have some tea? Sending them an owl. That was very sweet and something exciting to look forward to. But before we, of course, get there, thank goodness Harry had a tea appointment because he needed it after his double potions class. Now, I know some people might be like, why does he have a double potions class? I see potions class as science class where you have the lab and you need to brew the potion and it might take a little while longer because I know for me in high school, I needed to have sometimes double science to accomplish those labs. But to know that you're in that dungeon with Snape, who right from the get-go picks on Potter. Oh, I love it. Right from the get-go. And, and I wish I were half as good. I mean, no, not even half. I wish I were an eighth as good of a wordsmith as Alan Rickman. I wish the words that came out of my being and through my, my larynx, out of my voice box. Especially if you barely move your face. Don't you dare. Don't you dare. If you besmirch the good name, your face, except <laughs> your lips, you might be able to do it. Don't you dare besmirch the the great name of Alan Rickman. He is perfection uh, all around. It his his voice and the way he He's delivers fantastic. his I agree. words is like. Let me see you try though. Let me like see you try. Chocolate wrapped in bacon, covered in bacon fat, covered in. And like it's just so smooth it's and disgusting. buttery and just oh I, I could How listen about to, like chocolate caramel popcorn? No, because <laughs> popcorn's too scratchy. It's way too scratchy. You gotta get something smooth. You gotta okay. you gotta you gotta do it's like taking caramel and just it's like taking the smuck as caramel in a bottle and just squeezing it in your throat. We're hungry. <laughs> <laughs> so hungry. So we're hanging out here. Yeah, uh, let me let me just because I, I have to. Okay, and I'm just gonna think of food. Snape, like Flitwick, started the class by taking the register, and like Flitwick, he paused at Harry's name. Ah, uh, yes, he said softly, Harry Potter, our new 
celebrity. <laughs> oh man, the, oh our new celebrity. Oh, I, I just and he I just love- digs into him. He asks him these questions about little nitpick things. Which oh. might I add, one of the things is wormwood. Um, and it gets me really excited because we now have a wormwood plant That's true. in our front yard. And I just need to shout out um, a listener of ours and friend of ours um, sent this article from Marie Claire about the meaning behind Snape's first words, which are going to supposedly blow our minds. So what would I get if I added powdered root of acidil? Asphodel. Yep. And an infusion of wormwood. Um, rec- according to Victorian flower language... Asphodel is a type of lily, meaning oh. my regrets follow you to the grave. And wormwood means absence, also typically symbolized bitter sorrow. So if you combine that, it means I bitterly regret Lily's death. Oh my goodness. Bam. Just like that. A winner. Oh. That and is good stuff. according to Snape, if you combine the two, it creates a sleeping potion so powerful it's known as the drought of living death. You know, it's just like, is his life now a living death? Because he's without his lily. So deep. So deep. Oh, so deep. So deep. (laughs) Thank you, Bailey, for sending that in. And one of the things, too, that happens here is that Snape immediately dismisses the idea of the rest of the other classes. I love when he says there will be no silly wand waving here. Like, you don't even need wands here. Because this this is such an amazing science. I find that fantastic. And I find that so enveloping uh, as a class and as a feature of that class. Wand waving, when you do the, when you do the expecto patronum, the charm or whatever, or when you do that, that comes from the wizard. That comes from, like, I, I feel like wizards are either really powerful or they're not really powerful. And those charms are uh, as a result of that of that power, but potions it doesn't come from the wizard. Potions is created by the wizard, and that takes science. That takes that takes uh, dedication, and that takes knowledge. That takes specific talent that either you have or you don't. Mm. And just because you. Uh, uh, for example, I could I could be taught how to hit a baseball. Yes, I I could I could learn every single facet on how to hold a bat, grip the bat, swing the bat, finish with the swing, balance, feet, footwork, all of it. I could I could be taught by Ted Williams. I've been taught. And yes, you have, but I will never hit like Ted Williams. Mm-hmm. It just doesn't matter. Because Ted Williams created something. You know who's great at potions? Who? Lily. Really? Lily was like one of the best potion students. Isn't that so cool? That is awesome. But you're right. It's it's an innate thing. Mm-hmm. Um, we find out Hermione frequently struggles actually with potions. You right. know, but it just just takes a, a bit of a time. Poor Neville. I mean, goodness gracious. He mixed <laughs> up the porcupine quills. <laughs> um, during this whole belittlement that Snape has, he asks um, Harry, you know, like, what what's a bezoar? I don't know how they actually say it. It's supposed to sound fancy. Like I, I would French. say bezoar. Something like sure. that. Or but bizarre. this is what Harry uses when Ron is poisoned with a love potion that's gone bad. Mm-hmm. Um, is is this item? So it's really neat to see it be brought in. Right. Um, you know, several books later. Oh, and lavender then, brown. And then when Neville makes this big mess, Snape even blames Harry still for it, saying, right. "You know, did you mess him up? Did you tell him not to do?" It? Because Make you're yourself still... look better. Yes, and oh. it's funny because like Harry does want to look good. Like there's. There's a little bit of truth in this. Now, mind you, Snape blows things completely out of proportion because he thinks about Harry and he sees James and he thinks that he's going to be just like James was in school. But the truth of the matter is, is that Harry isn't all like James, but Harry is still a Gryffindor. And Harry is finally ready to prove himself. You know, he's on like this new level playing field. And... Yeah, he wants to be good. He wants to be good at this. Right. But he didn't mess things up for Neville on purpose. Poor Neville. No, no. And, and of course, that's what Snape immediately jumps to, because the first thing that he does when he's taking the <laughs> class attendance is our new celebrity. That 
is indicative of his real feelings towards Harry, which are, Harry. are totally unfounded. In fact, he shows such favoritism to, uh, against every, only rather to Malfoy. And mm-hmm. he, he just criticizes everybody else. Yep. Immediately we get the sense well, all that- All Gryffindors, yeah. yeah. We get the sense that Snape hates Harry. Harry gives him a little something, though. You know, Harry doesn't. Harry doesn't take it all sitting down because, of course, Hermione's there and she is raising her hand, raising her hand so high it's like she's trying to touch the oh, ceiling just, at one you point. Can just, you can feel it. You can see it. How With she's each question <laughs> reaching up so high, and finally Harry just you know says to Snape like, "Why don't you just ask Hermione?" Like she obviously knows the answer. Um, gets a couple little snickers um, from his from his classmates, and in the end, Harry is docked two points from Gryffindor within his first week of school. Right, and you know what that shows too is that Harry is not a f- he he knows that Snape hates him, or at least to his interpretation. Yet he meets Snape on the on the so called battlefield. He is prepared to say whatever he needs to say to rebel against Snape in any way that's possible. And it just shows you, it further cements his Gryffindor uh, sensibilities. Mm -hmm. After this terrible time, Harry and Ron go down to have some tea at Hagrid's hut. And we get to meet Fang, the boarhound, who is not properly shown in the movies. It's a different breed of dog um, in the movies. Um, but we get to go Stats there. Stats of a nerds. <laughs> I am a nerd, Blake. <laughs> if we have not figured this out, at least by now, my love. <laughs> I'm a nerd. Um, and Ron gets to meet Hagrid. And Hagrid gets to talk a little bit about his brother, Charlie. Because, of course, Ron has like a million brothers um, mm-hmm. who, who, of course, was great with animals. Of course, Hagrid would remember that about him. But really what's happening is we get to learn, we get to see the newspaper clipping about Gringotts and the break-in that happened. Mm. Because in the movies, it's um, the owls that come in with the post and Harry asks if he can look at the Daily Prophet. But in the books, it's mentioned to Harry by Ron on the train. Oh, guess what? There was a break-in at Gringotts yesterday. Well, not yesterday, but earlier this month or whatever. And now we see it again. And this is where it's very clear to Harry that it happened at Gringotts. On July 31st, his birthday, the same day that he and Hagrid went, and it says in the article that luckily the vault that was in question had um, been already cleared out that same day. So he brings it up to Hagrid. He brings it up to Hagrid, and Hagrid pivots. Just pivots. and, and, And you're already left asking the question, okay, what is the deal with Hagrid, why is he not like? Why is he defending Snape? Number one, mm-hmm. uh, and why is he not being so forthcoming about the information that he may or may not know? Uh, yeah, that's a big deal for Hagrid. Now, if you can uh, refresh my memory, my darling, mm-hmm. why are people breaking in to to get the Sorcerer's Stone? Because somebody wants the Sorcerer's Stone. Aha! Uh-huh. Somebody wants it. Right. Understood. Yeah. Got it. Okay. Understood. Got it. Why would anyone break in? I don't, I'm just saying. Oh, okay. But it goes to show you it's a it's a wizard of magnificent abilities if they're trying to break into Gringotts and not get caught. So that's really what, li- what lingers with Harry. Not necessarily his bad time with Snape, but actually this thing with his his gut telling him something's wrong, that Hagrid completely changed the subject, that Hagrid does seem to know something Mm -hmm. about what was taken out of that vault that they had visited, which is pretty cool. You know, it's funny because this is the first time that Harry questions Hagrid's intent. It feels like Harry says, whoa, wait a second, hold on. And Hagrid has always been the opposite of Snape, so far within the story. Mm -hmm. I mean, Snape even goes as far as saying, uh, I can teach you how to bottle fame, brew glory, even stopper death. Those things are bottle fame, brew glory, stopper death. Those are all self-serving things. Those are all ideas that a Slytherin, I think, would appreciate. I'm a Slytherin. I would absolutely love to know how to bottle fame or brew, uh, brew glory. Absolutely. That is the... Dis- it's also very Gryffindor. Um, can you tell me how, 
why that's Gryffindor. Because I always sensed that I this was it's... one of the reasons why Harry didn't necessarily connect with Snape, even though he started off with the whole uh, the new celebrity thing. But I feel like Gryffindor is opposite of wanting to brew f- fame and and bottle glory, all that other stuff. I think Gryffindors want fame, but they want to work for it. I think Slytherins want fame, however they can get it. Oh, and that's what I'm saying. He can bottle it. He can brew it. And he can even stop death if necessary. And he can teach you as long as you're not an idiot. By the way, Snape calling all of his students idiots on the first day. Classic. Awesome. Snape. (laughs) Awesome. Snape. Just love it. Oh, my goodness gracious. So a fun chapter, a relatively quick chapter, but it lays out a lot of important breadcrumbs that we really enjoy. We get to, of course, meet Snape. We get to hang out with Quirrell and, of course, hanging out with Hagrid. You know, it's been an interesting thing. Blake and I have been rewatching the movies just for fun. And we watched um, five. We just finished up five. And I keep remarking upon the fact that... Harry and Ron and Hermione are Hagrid's friends and it breaks my heart a little bit. It makes me love Hagrid even more if that was even possible because here's Hagrid who's worked at Hogwarts, who is seen as different because he is a half-breed, he's half-giant. And here he is inviting 11-year-olds to his hut for tea, who he loves. I mean, he's known Harry since he was one. You know, he he dearly cares for this child. But it strikes me frequently how I don't know who else Hagrid has in his life to like chat with until he has Madame Maxine. Sure. And even then, you know. Melissa like- says, Melissa says, our Slytherins want to be influencers. <laughs> <laughs> Good job. Oh, Good it. job. Last thing I want to mention here too is this is already- We have our email questions. I know. Last okay. thing, I, but, but before we get into that, okay. the last thing I want to mention is you can already see, see Harry's flaw in- extreme play here he senses obviously that snape hates him and thereby he wants to go back at snape but that sense and that need to fight back has already blinded him it's already pushed him in a in in a in a direction that says snape is bad and from now on we will get that same perspective Mm -hmm. regardless of all the little clues and the again, the perfect sleight of hand from the author about Quirrell, you already are saying as a reader, yep, Snape sucks. And somehow, Snape is behind it because Hagrid refuses to tell me. Fun thing. Here we go. Let's go through the different professors who we hung out with in this chapter and give me one word to describe them from what we've hung out with. Ooh, this is one of my favorite games to play with characters. Yes. Ready? Okay. So, um, I mean, it's not necessarily a professor, but uh, Filch. Mean. Ooh, nice. Okay. Flitwick. I have no idea. Small. (laughs) McGonagall. What is a weekend? (laughs) Too many words. One word. (laughs) Uh, tough. Bins. Yeah, right. No, no clue. Boring. You could say boring. Sure, he boring. died. Yeah, he died. Yeah, he, <laughs> that's right. He's so old, Pearl. he walked out of his own body. Pearl right. from this book. Creepy AF. No, I'd say stinky. <laughs> <laughs> um, Snape. Terrifying. Mm, good. I know. Good job. That's, and Hagrid. Uh, warm. Oh, lovely, lovely. Um, okay, different perspective. Do you have someone in mind? Yeah, I kind of want to take Snape. Go for it. Okay. So boring, but basic. What else? Why is that boring and basic? Because, like, of course that's who you'd pick. Well, because Snape freaking is awesome, number one. Um, <laughs> but y- you look at this and you have- I want to challenge you. Uh, take it from Krill's perspective. Uh, okay. All right. Well, no, why don't, you, why don't you go? Why don't you be more no. interesting than I am? No, okay, go ahead. No, 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 go. You already go. Okay, you really out. want Snape? Fine. No, no, go no. for you, Snape. No, no please, you want to, like, please you want to pull I'm done. all nope. the heartstrings. That's it. No. That's it. I, okay, nope, both of us can go. All right. When you look at it from Snape's perspective, his arch nemesis, think of your arch nemesis. Ugh. I know you know who it is. Ugh. Yeah. Your arch nemesis. Yes. Now, not only, <laughs> not only are you in charge of te- teaching his kid. Oh. But more importantly, you're in charge of protecting his kid. Forever. Ah. And like, and you know, 
you know what's going to happen to the kid, regardless of how much you protect him. And he looks just like him. And he looks like, and he's, and worse yet, yeah. worse yet, yeah. he's got the person's eyes that you love most on this planet. Oh, look at those little pudding I know, eyes. right? These these crap brown eyes right yes, here that you're looking at yes. right now? That kid's got my crap brown eyes. You and my arch nemesis, who is also male, made a baby. <laughs> this is getting more and more interesting by the minute. Um, so having said that, he has to do a couple of things here. He has to take out his frustration on on Harry. Okay. And he also has to prop up all the other things that he appreciates which is being smart and attentive. And the, the funny thing is, is that he considers Harry a celebrity when all, all that Harry wants is just to be normal, yeah. just to be regular. He just doesn't want to, he doesn't want to stand out anymore because he already does. He already did stand out with the Dursleys. He just wants to fit in. It's Draco is the, that's the one that wants to stand out and be different from everybody. And that's the person that he favors. Mm-hmm. Which happens to go in line with the idea of bottling fame, brewing glory, and putting a stopper in death. That is what Slytherins do. And since he's head of Slytherin House, he has to take care of that and he has to prop that up. Part of me thinks that he knows that Draco is Harry's nemesis right off the jump. Okay. And he's doing everything he can to test and push Harry. Okay. And I like that. Nice. I like when teachers and coaches... (laughs) Push, push 11 you. year olds. Yeah, when they push you, when, when they make you become better. <laughs> Calling them idiots. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. I, all the kids that this I. This is why you were not a teacher. All the kids that I coached, I called them all names and I did all the stupid things. But you didn't things. call them idiots. I didn't call them idiots, but I pushed them. I, 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 I worked them hard because that's what they needed. <sighs> they needed to be taught. It's moments like these that I need like a stress ball. I need a stress ball in here, like Hedwig <laughs> stress ball. Is there such a thing? Like a Hedwig stress ball, so I can just squeeze it. I just it. feel so bad for Snape. <sighs> Snape is, oh, he's such a He should not tragic... treat an 11-year-old boy like this. Yes, he should. No, he should. <laughs> no, I, I will say. just to be funny because. No, I will say that he should not have. We're married and we have children. He, he should not have treated an 11-year-old so poorly. Thank I would you. agree. Like Snape but, needs like a therapist and a journal. But when you look at like it, some yoga. Like, he definitely needs yoga and a girlfriend. Oh my goodness gracious! A little bow chicka wow. So much yoga. Now, do you think Snape would be a fan of hot yoga, or do you think he would? He would. I mean, he's already kind of slippery and slimy. Like because I feel like if he's going to do yoga, he might as well go all in. Yeah, um, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. You wanted to do Quirrell. No, I don't really want to anymore. I oh, just okay. want to give. I want to give a shout out to Neville. I just need to give like my heart to Neville right now because Neville never thought he was good enough to get into this school. Never thought that he was good enough to be in Gryffindor. And now, in his first week of school, he literally melts his pot. He <laughs> melts his cauldron, and Snape, who we end up finding out. Um, in the third movie, in the third book, or is it, yeah, in the third book and movie, like, that's his, that's the thing he's afraid of the most, is a professor. Right. And it starts on this one day when he accidentally messed up the porcupine quills. <laughs> All right. Let's get to our questions and our emails. Okay. Uh, so we're going to read our emails. We're going to answer the questions. And uh, for those of you who are joining us live, thank you very much. You can ask us the questions once we are done. If you're listening to this on the podcast app, don't feel left out. You can join us live next time on Monday at 8 o'clock. And then you can enjoy either one emailing us or two joining us on the live and asking us the questions at this point. Here's the first email. Uh, this one comes from Anne. She's the, Hi, from Anne. Denver Denver on the yes. Outlander phone calls. We were supposed to see Anne this summer, but COVID. She says that she loves the Harry Potter books, and, and I am happy that you're doing a deep dive into them. I discovered them when I was 30 years old, and all my friends were talking about them, Harry Potter. So I picked one up at Barnes & Noble, and I was hooked by the letters being delivered and the description. Uh, okay. Do you think, number one, that James Potter could have been in Slytherin? And do you think that Harry is a good combination of James and Lily Marvin? I will leave this to you. I do. I think that James could have easily been in Slytherin. I think that Slytherin and Gryffindor are very easily interchangeable houses. Um, and mm. do I think that Harry is a good combination of James and Lily? I would agree. I think that Harry's competitiveness and his drive to... Um, 
succeed at all costs um, is very James. I also um, see his selflessness, especially that we see later in the books where Absolutely. he just keeps saying, I need to do this alone. I need to do this alone. Like, please don't put yourselves in danger for me. Or when he um, tells, when he tells Voldemort, you have nothing, but at least I have love. I yes. have friends. It's very Lily. Very Lily. Oh, I just got gooseies. Oh, goodness mm-hmm. gracious. We just got done watching Order of the Phoenix. So we just watched that whole, that whole bit. And yes, I, I really feel like he's a good amalgam. Hillary, of, yeah, sorry. Of them. Sorry. Uh, Hillary wrote in saying, uh, the classes mentioned this chapter, which one would you most enjoy or do you think you would do the best in? Defense against the Dark Arts. Not even a question. That you would enjoy or do the best in? Both, baby. Really? Both. Blake. Yeah. Blake. What? What are you telling me, Blake? What are All you saying I'm that for? I'm thinking about is that horror movie. What horror movie? The one that scared the bejesus out of you. <laughs> That's like the dark arts. Paranormal activity. Yeah, Blake like couldn't sleep. Couldn't sleep for, for a week. week. Couldn't sleep. I, Baby, I love you. Here's and a fun I appreciate story. That here's you a would fun want. story. Here's a fun story. So Mary and I, we 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 were. Oh, this was in like 2008 or 2009. So we were just, I think, engaged when we went to go see this. We were down in D.C. to visit my best friend. It was Halloween night. It was Halloween night. All Hallows Eve. Mary was wearing the Ohura costume from Star Trek, and You're I was welcome. wearing the Captain Kirk Star. Uh, Our friends were dressed as Snuggies. Yep, and Mary was hot that night, man, R- running around okay. in that. Dr- All right, sorry. Come on, children. All right, so. Um, we go to see Paranormal Activity, and we were staying in D.C. at my best friend's house. And this rickety old fracking building from the mid eighteenth or mid nineteenth century, right on Capitol Hill. And we were we had some adult beverages that night. We watched Paranormal Activity. It was terrifying. I get home, and it's time to go to bed. And I figured, hey, I go to bed, no problem. I'll be all right. I was wide eyed all night, and I was terrified because of all the noises in the house. And I thought that if I just hug Mary hard enough, the the stupid apparition won't get me. So I, I basically squeezed me, squeezed and and choked you out all night. Yep. Because I was terrified of this. Uh, I actually think yeah. that you would enjoy and excel um, um, in Flitwick's class. I think you'd be like down with like practicing the spells and stuff. Uh, I don't know. I'm. I'm. By the way, uh, Ali says I think Blake thinks uh, defense against the defense against the dark arts is more like taekwondo. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe because I got no. my black belt. I don't know. Just throwing that out there. Okay. So yes, maybe it is like taekwondo. Okay. How about you? What would you? Be, what would you like most? And what would you most excel in? Um, I think I would like herbology most because I like being outdoors. And now that I've grown. 10 of the 20 plants that I've planted and 10 of them are still living. I feel really good at growing things, but I actually think I would do, I think my best class would be potions. I excel at chemistry and I excel at baking. I like to follow things down to a T. I probably would have found uh, the Half Blood Prince's copy of potions absolutely. and I would have nailed that class. Yep, absolutely. But would, you, even, would you have used the Half yes. Blood? No. Honey, I am Gryffindor. And I want to be really good. Wow. <laughs> I would have tried it and been like, oh, this works. Okay. I'll I see. I feel like you'd be like, nope, that's against the rules. Can't do it. I dabble. I would dabble. Oh, my God. I would be all about I would be all about the half blood. Okay. So uh, next question. Right, now we got a bunch of questions from Melissa. Okay. One, how would you handle suddenly being famous and not only just famous, but a famous witch or wizard in a whole world? You never knew existed like Harry does at the begins his time at Hogwarts. Mary, I'll ask you that question. I hate it. I hated being famous in my state. That's true. That's true. And I probably wouldn't handle I Well, you would like it. I would like it. You would. I would be all about it. I hated it. I just wanted to eat my cheese grits in peace. And everybody was like, <laughs> Mary Larson. Mary Larson without her clipping extensions. Remember that time we were at Home Depot? And oh, people we were like, fighting. Mary! We were fighting over a Christmas tree because I wanted the Christmas tree with the colorful <laughs> lights and you wanted the Christmas tree with the white lights. And I said, fine, let's get the one that switches between both. It's magical for children. And we were fighting <laughs> about a Christmas tree in Home Depot. And suddenly someone came Mary! up and went, Mary Larson. <laughs> Hi. I see you on TV all the time. And I was like, this is not my She's wearing a URI sweatshirt and oh my flip God. flops. 
Not my fan. So yeah. I do not like being famous. All right, number two. What would you find most fascinating and or most confusing about the quirks of Hogwarts, the Wizarding World, i.e. the portraits, the moving staircases, owl mail, etc.? Mary, what would you find most the staircases and how there's bits confusing. that like disappear and they're not there. I would be so mad. That would be my pet peeve. That I, I would probably complain about that every single day. I think the most annoying thing for me would be like, bro, why can't we use computers? Why do we have to use quills? This is stupid. <laughs> <laughs> uh, why do you think Snape is always getting for the defensive against the dark arts when he is so eloquently about potion making in his class? Uh, why do you think he was passed over by... Quirrell and Gilderoy Lockhart. Why do you think? I think because Dumbledore knows that Snape dabbles with the dark. And if he continues to do the dark, the dark arts, it's, it may not have the best. It's like, it's like putting an alcoholic like next to a bar. You don't want to do that. Interesting. What do you think? I also think that it's bait to hire dark art people because that's what he does. Yeah, you see, I I never bought that. Like, I, I, and I'm not saying that's not right, but like the whole thing with Gilderoy Lockhart, right? Like, we know that Dumbledore hired Lockhart Lockhart to like out him as a, a fraud, right? But why would you put your students, the the people, uh, you know, you have to take care of most, just to settle something with Gilderoy Lockhart? Why? Why would you put them in that position? I, I like. I don't like that explanation. I feel like that's. I feel like that's just ridiculous. Well, and he was going to die. Ridiculous. Everyone dies in that position. Well, Lockhart didn't die. Or like, bad things happen to them. That's true. Literally, not a great job. Like if you were like, oh, let's move into this haunted house where everyone's died inside or gone crazy. <laughs> no. Uh, All right, number five. Uh, Do you think Snape was hot on Harry during his first potions class because of the history with James, because his obligation to protect him causes resentment to knock his celebrity down a few pegs? Marvin, what do you got? All of the above. I think that Snape needs a hobby. You know, I really feel bad. Dumbledore knows how to have the work-life balance, okay? He's got that down. He's He's got bowling. He's got knitting. Yep. Okay, he finds great knitting patterns. Chamber you know, music. Oh, loves the chamber music, likes to dabble in trying assorted sweets from the muggle world. I mean, this guy has time, okay? He knows how to have a little me time. Mm-hmm. Snape needs a little me time, but instead he probably has like a shrine to Lily and just obsesses over <laughs> things. This isn't the bodyguard. <laughs> I think so. I think Snow. So. Oh, man. All right. We, uh, so if you guys have any more questions, let us know on the live feed. Ali says, not a question, but more of a request. It's a Snape off between Mary and Blake. Who does the best Alan Rickman Snape We'll get back to you on that. Ooh, I think I would have to say me. I'm going to practice. We'll try it next time. <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> <laughs> a uh, new celebrity. Clearly, fame isn't everything. I mean, my favorite line, honest to God, my most used line is not you're a wizard, Harry. It's your hands all sweaty. <laughs> so <laughs> I can do a good Harry Potter. Oh. Okay. We need to wrap this up, baby. Uh let's see. Uh I just I wanted to see if there's any more other questions. Um We can also answer them after. Well, Caitlin okay. says, How do you think Hogwarts would have done online learning during COVID? <laughs> <laughs> the Wizarding World would have come up with an, a very easy uh It would have been a spell. charm of yeah. some sort, you know, gu- guaranteed. Mm-hmm. Uh, Rebecca says, ooh, Mary is closer. Yeah, it's Mary, Mary, Mary. Yeah, fine, fine. Mary did an amazing job because she's awesome and I suck. Rebecca and heard me say, I think, snow. <laughs> yes, I've had a couple of bevies. All right. Uh, yes. Yes, I think that's it. I agree, Blake. Ready I told to you to wrap up like two minutes ago. <laughs> Fair enough. Let's do it. <laughs> I just have to say this first. Melissa says, I think you both should do a uh, podcast in either Alan Rickman or another Harry Potter character voice now after listening and, and watching that. We may. Maybe we'll do that as like a little extra. You know what? I'm not going to say no. Maybe we could do it for our JoinTheNerdClan.com friends. <laughs> 
clearly yeah. Alan Rickman <laughs> is everything. <laughs> okay, so this has been a lot of fun. Yes. What's the next? Po- what's the next chapter? Uh, the Midnight Duel, chapter nine. Oh, Theory. not so chapter good. eight, but chapter nine. Chapter nine, and this is something that is not covered in the movie at all, which was surprising. Actually, I feel like this was a, one of those things that really cements Malfoy as the antagonist to Harry's protagonist. It's all good, man. They got a lot of things. Who like, would, what would you consider the, the real? Trolley? What would you consider the real protagonist? I mean, the, the real antagonist in the in this text so far is it? Is it Snape? Or is it Malfoy? That's the real question, Mary. What do you think? Can I get back to you on that? Oh, come on! <laughs> Who do yeah. you think is the main antagonist That's li- so far? It's sitting on the fence. Come on, take it. The take main it. antagonist Give me so a hot far take. been the Dursleys. Give me a hot take. It's been the Dursleys. But if I had to choose who the main antagonist is so far, I would say Snape. Oh, man, fine. Uh, we gotta play the music. My again. name's Mary. My name's Blake. Mischief Managed. Mischief Managed.